can a demonic entity truly possess a person into killing another? Through the story of The Devil on Trial, a Netflix documentary film, we dive into the cases of David Gletzel and Arnie Johnson, to whom have which underwent a series of possessions. And so we will be talking about this case and I will be going through the background history of the family along with the haunting history and any experiences that I had while getting this information in addition to things that I have channeled in. So let's crack into it. The Devil on Trial movie summary. So, essentially, the documentary follows the Glatzel family and Arnie Johnson along with the lawyer who represented Arnie Johnson. And so he talks about how, you know, at first he sees this as being bogus, that he doesn't believe what his client is saying, which was that, you know, the devil made him stab his boss which, you know, then killed him. And, yeah, so he has to come up with a defense for that. But eventually he does learn and then believes that what he did experience was a possession. And, yeah, and so they pretty much follow that case there and David's possession. So, yeah, it's a great movie on Netflix and I highly recommend that people watch it because there's a lot you can learn from it. So we're going to be talking about the family and case history next. The Glatzel family haunting in the possession of Arnie Johnson is a real life case that gained significant attention in the 1980s. The events began when the Glatzel family residing in Connecticut reported strange occurrences in their home. The youngest member of the family, David Glatzel, was allegedly being tormented by a malevolent presence. The incidents escalated to the point where David's sister's boyfriend, Arnie Johnson, became involved. According to accounts, Arnie Johnson attempted to protect David from the entity and, during one encounter, it is claimed that he challenged the demon to possess him instead. Soon after, Arnie began displaying erratic behavior and the possession claim emerged. This led to a series of events that culminated in Arnie committing a violent crime, killing his landlord and boss. The subsequent trial, known as the Devil Made Me Do It case, gained media attention as it was the first time in America legal history that the defense attempted to prove a not guilty by reason of demonic possession plea. However, the court did not recognize the possession claim as a valid defense and Arnie Johnson was ultimately convicted of manslaughter. The Glatzel family haunting and the possession of Arnie Johnson remain a controversial case with believers and skeptics offering varying interpretations of the events. It has inspired books, documentaries, and even a feature film shedding light on the blurred lines between the supernatural and the legal system. The haunting itself. One of the most notable points of this case is where David has a terrifying experience at the new house his family member had bought, where he was helping them clean the house and he was cleaning the one bedroom when he had a scary experience where he gets shoved onto the bed and he feels like he's being held down or pulled down into the bed by an invisible force. The question is, was the experience the sole entry point where it all began or was there something going on beforehand and the entity decided to show itself right then and there due to David being emotionally vulnerable in that moment, but also he's the youngest of the family. I will be relaying more information about the oppression stage and somewhat of the influence and in possession stages 
aka the paranormal activity that went on prior to and during David and Arnie's possession. According to accounts, they witnessed objects moving on their own, unexplained noises, furniture levitating, bed shaking, and strange odors permeating the house. David in particular displayed signs of possession such as speaking in deep and unnatural voices, exhibiting superhuman strength, and experiencing violent episodes. During his first episode, I could feel the emotions of everyone witnessing his possession. In addition, I began feeling cold but also chills. Eyes burning like acid would splash into them. The sensation of colds, hands gripping onto my throat, my left ear burning along with the spot behind that ear burning and throbbing. And then house blessings pissed off the entity, which the thing is, when it comes to demonic entities, depending on how you cleanse the space, you can accidentally piss them off. And so, yeah, that is what happened. These paranormal activities and David's possession ultimately led to the involvement of Ed and Lorraine Warren, renowned paranormal investigators. They believed that a demonic entity was responsible for the events and conducted an exorcism on David to try and rid him of the possession. Before conducting their investigation, they had brought a doctor to check David to rule out any medical explanations. While David is going through a minor exorcism, I feel an achy pain behind my left ear and on the left side of the my head again like on the back end and then during david's main exorcism the entity started to act desperately and fight against the priest and ed warren which caused ed to have a massive heart attack that was induced by the demonic entity and his poor health as this exorcism is going on and david is flailing around i see an older male figure perhaps a grandfather figure i'm not quite sure who he was with white hair trying to call David's soul back. While all of this is going on, Arnie Johnson, the boyfriend of David's sister, feels helpless and guilty, wishing and saying aloud, take me on instead, thereby inviting the demonic entity to his body unknowingly. Since the demonic entity was on its way of being kicked out of David, it took this opportunity. Arnie's empathy for a kid he was close to in order to become his attachment instead. The act of going from a possessed person to another person during an exorcism is called transmigration. Lorraine Warren warns the police about the situation with Arnie and tells them that something horrible was going to happen and to be on guard and ready just in case. Well, of course they didn't listen to her because they probably thought she was a nutcase. It is important to note that, and the Warrens do state this during the case, that demons and devils don't necessarily act at any given time due to the fact that time is nothing to an entity that is timeless and exists in a realm where time is not linear or fluid, that it is happening everywhere at the same time all at once. Therefore, they have no problem lying in wait for the perfect time where the person is in their most vulnerable state whether that be a mental or physical illness, lowered psychic shield from substances that can alter your sense of reality, etc. This is exactly what happens to Arnie. One day he wakes up not feeling well, and to make things worse during a get-together with his girlfriend and boss and or landlord, he has a few drinks, further lowering his psychic, mental, and physical defenses because his body doesn't take kindly to the alcohol like it would have normally due to being sick. This also makes his state of mind very foggy and unable to process and comprehend reality, thus making it the perfect opportunity for the demonic entity to possess him. Arnie literally created a hole in his defenses that allowed the demonic entity to possess him. During the exorcism of David, Arnie had given the entity full permission to possess him as well. So in other words, permission plus illness plus alcohol equals whole and spiritual defenses equals possession. Also, don't be like Arnie. During Arnie's possession, he kills his boss and begins wandering around the road. See, now in the film... They made it like it was his boss, because 
I guess his girlfriend worked at the kennels that his boss owned. That's why it's kind of like a boss, but also landlord. Anyway, in this moment, Claire cognizantly, my guides tell me, he was on his way to David to kill him. The entity wanted to finish the job since he had failed, but also because it wanted revenge. Immediately afterwards, David admits to feeling this way as well, which validated what my guides said. My guides explained that because David had an energetic link to this demonic entity, that was the reason he could feel that it was coming for him. Before Arnie makes it to David, the police do catch him, and he has no recollection of any of the events that had transpired. This is normal during a possession because the entity steps into the person's body and the person's consciousness is pushed to the side, eliminating any control over their body's actions. The Warrens help the defense attorney to bring in witnesses for the court hearing, but of course the judge doesn't allow demonic possession as a defense, which makes their argument and witnesses null and void. This leads to Arnie being convicted of the murder of his boss. Unfortunately, what annoys me about this is the fact that those in and on trial must swear to the Bible to tell the truth under the eyes of God. And yet, in this case, the defendants weren't allowed to use demonic possession as a part of their defense, even when they had plenty pieces of evidence. It also doesn't surprise me, though, because the government is corrupt, so I mean. But it's like... Ed Warren actually brought this up. He's like, you swear to God on the Bible, but you don't believe in the devil? How can you believe in a God and not the opposite? Make it make sense. Now, arguments against the case. One notable instance that had some questioning the validity of the possession was how David's father had slapped him and demanded him to knock off the behavior and sit down and David did as he was told. The thing is, just because David had listened in that moment doesn't mean that the possession was fake. When I tapped into the experience, when the father did what he did, it actually called back David's soul while the demonic entity was retreating. Part of the entity's goal is to make it seem fake and to pit people against the victim. When the victim is isolated, it makes it easier for the entity to get them to lose hope and give in, which would further allow the possession. Lucky for David, his mother and some of his siblings believed in him, but the best scam of the devil is to get people to believe that it doesn't exist because then it is harder to help those under demonic attack. They wouldn't get the proper help and treatment then. Another argument was against the Warrens and how they conducted their interviews and investigations. According to Carl Glatzel, the oldest brother, he believed that the Warrens had been suggesting this type of behavior to David and the rest of the family to get them to agree with what they were saying, but also to get David to act like he was possessed for attention, aka feeding David on how to act. Lorraine told the family that she saw the entity standing behind David and that it was very likely that it was going to attempt to possess him, so it would be a good idea for the family to keep strict watch over David. Carl Glatzel also explains that the Warrens had misled them into thinking that they would become famous for this story, saying that they will be rich from the book they wanted to publish. Even David, his mother and sister, felt like they were lied to about that, suggesting that the Warrens were only in it for the money and nothing else. Carl argues that if the Warrens were actually there to help David, they wouldn't be filming, recording, and taking pictures of him. While this argument is valid and a cause for concern, my guides explain to me, while the Warrens could have handled the situation better, they needed to document every single thing they could. Why? This is because if there needed to be an exorcism, which from their initial meeting, Lorraine suspected from seeing the entity behind David, they would need to go through a series of prerequisites and or screening processes from the Catholic Church where they look at the history of the family 
and make sure that there have been physical and mental medical evaluations to ensure any type of illness was not at play, which is why they brought the doctor in. Two, the afflicted are given tools and methods to help combat the issue. But if it does not work, you know, then they move on to the next thing. But it's like, they also need actual proof of said possession. And this is just to name a few. The Catholic Church has a whole list of things that you gotta follow for their screening process. Which I actually posted an article on Patreon, so if you're curious, go there to find it. So yes, it was important for the Warrens to film, record, and take pictures for evidence to hand into the Catholic Church for an exorcism. Not to mention it is extremely important to document these types of things for research and learning purposes. Because the Warrens did this, their research has been integral for those seeking to learn about demonology and help bring guidance to future cases. While clearing out their mother Judy's possessions after her death, Carl Glatzel had discovered that she had been mixing a sleeping aid drug called Somonex in the entire family's food. He even claimed that she would often separate her food from the other members of the family, further raising Carl Glatzel's suspicion. Now, if you don't know what Somonex is, it is a brand name for a medication that contains the active ingredient, and I'm going to say this all butchered up. Diphenhydramine. Oh my god. What the hell? Diphenhydramine. There we go. Say that ten times really fast. Which is an antihistamine primarily used to treat symptoms of allergies, hay fever, and the common cold. It is also commonly used as a sleep aid due to its sedative properties. So it's kind of like Benadryl actually. Somonex is available over the counter and is used to relieve occasional sleeplessness. While Somonex can be effective in promoting sleep, it is important to be aware of potential negative side effects. Some common side effects of dihenhydramine what the fuck <laughs> include drowsiness, dizziness, dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, and urinary retention. These side effects can vary in severity and may differ from person to person. Kind of reminds me of hyacosamine. I think that's what it's called. It's a medicine that I was actually prescribed a while back, but I don't take that one anymore. But it it was for my bladder, but it also is an antihistamine. So it helps with allergies. But I, rec I recognized, like, the side effects... <laughs> Tell me you know what a drug is by the side effects. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Additionally, diphenhydramine can cause a range of other adverse effects, especially if taken in higher than recommended doses or used for prolonged periods. These may include confusion, memory problems, difficulty concentrating, increased heart rate, low blood pressure, and even paradoxical reactions such as restlessness or agitation like um, Benadryl, la 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 la. And hence why I'm reading this uh, paper of my notes because my memory is shit. Um, yeah, because my medication, uh, one of the side effects is bad freaking memories, which is probably from the Benadryl or from any of my other allergy medications. Even though Somonex may have the ability to cause hallucinations and memory loss in rare instances, Especially when given to a person often and in high doses, this was not the case for David or Arnie. If anything, the drug would be similar to taking any type of substance that can lower a person's psychic defenses, like alcohol, like if given in large quantities. If not given in large quantities, it's like taking Benadryl. Meaning, while I don't physically see the drug causing David to act possessed, I do see it altering his senses state of mind and weakening his psychic shield, which made it easier for the demonic entity to possess him. So it probably made him really drowsy. And it, yeah, made him, you know, a little sluggish, made it a little easier for the demonic entity to possess him. Also, I would like to state that the Warrens brought in a doctor 
and the doctor checked him out. If they noticed that he was being poisoned with Sominex, I'm pretty sure the doctor would have noticed. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure the doctor would have, you know, picked up on something. Okay. My experiences with this entity, oh boy, oh boy, do I have a story for you all. Actually, I've run into this entity before. So a few years ago, when, you know, the newest Conjuring movie came out, which was The Devil Made Me Do It. So it's The Conjuring 3, essentially. After watching that film, I had a terrifying experience where the same entity had attacked me on the astral realm and created an illusion where it had possessed my fiance and was trying to kill me while his jaw was like hanging off like a zombie. Fun times. Once I was able to get out of that situation, the entity then tried to possess me. I remember seeing and experiencing the attack in a first person and third person point of view. The entity was invisible, but I could somehow see the energy frequency as it collided into my body and tried to force its way inside of my auric field. Desperately, I fought my ass off to deflect it and keep it away. I had to call in help from Shiva to get rid of it, and he did. He kicked its ass with his whip. Okay. So, also for more information about that exact experience, refer to my video called A Demon Attacked Me After Watching The Conjuring 3. It's going to be in a card. Actually, technically on this side. So, I would recommend watching that. Now, 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 about a week ago or so, Literally the night after watching the Devil on Trial documentary, I was confronted by a similar energy to what I had faced those few years ago, and it tried to manipulate me and trick me into doing exactly what Arnie Johnson did. So it could possess me. However, I quickly realized this and was able to thwart its effort. It then tried the same maneuver as before and came at my auric field to try to enter inside of it. I pushed it back and was like, hell nah, not today. During the early morning of the same day as I'm recording this, okay? 4 a.m. this morning, I was visited by a dark entity. And it was literally just like a dark outline. A dark, vague outline, really. In my room, on my fiancé's side of the bed, standing against the wall to the left side of my window. So the only reason I was up was because I had to go potty and to take Ghost out. And that's when I noticed it. So I was awake. Like, I was walking. I wasn't sleeping. But so I saw it with my third eye. And I was like, mm, I am not doing this right now at 4 o'clock in the morning. My ass is tired. And essentially, I was like, yo, get out. I ain't playing with you. And it left. It actually didn't, like, stay. So, yay. Okay. Now my channel. The information I received during my channel. A few years ago, when I was new at this mediumship thing and didn't have my defenses and confidence in check, I wouldn't think twice about attempting to channel information regarding this entity because of how it traumatized me when it tried to attack me. Now that I am much more knowledgeable and stronger, I was ready to give it a go to see exactly what we were dealing with, and I am sure everyone is curious as well. So was it actually a demonic entity? We're going to uh, talk about that. Well, let me just say... I got more information out of this channel than I expected, and there was a lot of stuff going on, actually. But immediately, immediately while I was going into channeling, right, I was confronted with that entity. And before I could even, like, get any information, really, the thing grabbed me by my throat and started zapping my energy and I got really sleepy and I'm actually feeling really sleepy right now. So if I'm looking like this, it's not because I'm high, it's because I'm tired. Thought I would, uh, you know, explain that. 
So when he grabbed me by my throat multiple times, I called in for Archangel Michael and he did help me and kick it off of me. So yay. I did get chest pains and the left side of my head and behind my left ear started to ache and hurt again. And I knew I was on the right track. I did see the entity's face. I did see the entity's face and I'll put a picture somewhere on here of an AI rendition of it. It almost, <laughs> okay. So it had human qualities to it, to the face part itself. And it kind of looked like a pale guy with sharp, creepy teeth, beady eyes, and what looks similar to Loki's helmet with the metal, like, you know, and then the horns. I thought that was kind of funny, not gonna lie. Um, the point of entry. I did kind of figure that out. So from what I could tell, it was purposely planted there in that house out of entertainment for themselves. So the person who did it, did it for shits and giggles. And, uh, however... That person did receive karmic consequences. So when you are messing with dark things, there's always consequences. I did find out that the family itself has generational cycles and curses that they must break. That is actually part of their soul lesson plan of this lifetime, though. Some of them have passed away, so... I mean, the fact that... David was able to get through his thing. I'm pretty sure he broke one of those uh, cycles. So, yay! Part of that cycle was substance abuse, whether that be alcohol or anything else. But I suspect the father had a substance abuse problem. I'm thinking alcohol. Can't remember if it was said in the movie. I don't remember, honestly. But regardless, he had his own attachment. From what I gather, it was very bug and parasitic-like. Not only was there a demonic entity, but there was also negative residual energy from previous and current owners. And a thought form entity created from a collection of negative energy. Conclusion! From what I discovered, the entity had been conjured to that home for shits and giggles by a bored individual who thought it would be fun, thereby creating a demonic house haunting. When David first entered the house, he was emotionally vulnerable due to poor self-esteem issues and trauma caused from his father's alleged alcohol abuse and anger issues. To make matters worse, the mother had been spiking everyone's food with Somnex, which had altered their state of mind ever so slightly, which was enough to further lower David's psychic defenses, making him the perfect candidate for a demonic attachment and possession victim. It is my firm belief that part of the mother's reasoning for spiking the food with Salmonex was because of her husband's alleged angry outbursts due to his alleged alcoholism and negative attachment of the bug and -ish parasitic like entity that fed into his negative behavior, in addition to the demonic entity, of course. Then, of course, having to do much of the child raising on her own, she wanted to make it easier on herself to do so. So if everyone was tired, they'd go to bed and were more apt to listening to instructions. While the Somnix does seem like a scapegoat for David's possession experience, I know for a fact that it did not cause him to act like he was possessed. David was indeed possessed, and I can say that with absolute certainty due to the fact that I too experienced the entity on multiple occasions. This demonic entity is extremely strong and not one to take lightly. Therefore, in the case of David Glatzel and Arnie Johnson, their possessions were real and not some scam conjured by the Warrens, even if they had talked about publishing books and movie deals and Blah, 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 blah. Again, they could have handled the situation better, but I do believe they genuinely had the intention to help the family. Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. Anyhow, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think that this was an actual possession of those two? I do. I do. I do. And there's a lot of information about the Warrens and their sus behavior. 
and uh, the fuck. <sighs> yeah, and not a good look for the Warrens, you know. There's some things I want to dig about them because oof. Oof. The things I've learned. The things I've learned about them. Not great. But anyhow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Ignore my hair catastrophe here. Jeez Louise. I can't. I can't tuck my hair. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you all soon. Next week. I will be getting into the paranormal influencers and creators and working on a series of messages from spirit for them. So, guys, get ready for that. And, quick announcement. I now am a featured creator on... Amazon. So not only do I have my merch up on Amazon, I also have collections of things. So if you want to know the protection supplies I use, all the books I have used for my own research, the tarot and oracle decks that I have, you can go on there and browse and maybe buy things. I don't know. Just, I, I will say, to be, you know, honest, I do get commissions. So, yeah, just want to be open about that. And lastly, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And, uh, yeah, so again, peace out. Love you guys. Hope to see you soon.